Well, in one sense they are. They're super predators. They have really keen senses, they're incredibly keen, so much they can hunt at night without a problem, deadly weapons. They're incredibly stealthy, they're agile, and they're able to climb, which a lot of predators can't. As a result, cats are basically a disaster for birds and rodents when they're introduced to a new area that didn't have them yet. Ask anyone from New Zealand. Actually. My earliest pet memory was our big orange cat, Joe. All my life growing up, we always had at least one cat, often more in my house. My cat, Bucky, was my best friend in high school and early college. I didn't have a lot of other, I had other friends, but you know, Bucky was the best. Poor Bucky basically went insane when I left home for two years. And when I came back, he was never quite the same. He still loved me though. I think cats are great as pets. And of course, sort of Lovecraft. I do think that feral cats are a massive burden on the wild environment and need to be limited as much as possible. I have only owned one cat ever since I got married because my wife and oldest son are allergic. I did not know this when I married him. My wife is suspicious that I would not have married her had I known, but I haven't fessed up to that yet. Anyway, we did own a Cornish Rex cat for a year or two under the belief that these are hypoallergenic, which proved partly true. Sadly, uh, that cat died due to the main predator of cats in America today, which are automobiles. Anyway, a lot of people have ilurophobia. Maybe not as much now as they used to, but they are afraid of cats. Uh, when I was in college, I briefly dated a blind girl. Uh, don't say it. But she hated cats because when she'd pet cats, they would often claw her. So she, her association of cats mentally was that they hurt her. So she didn't like them. But, you know, I love cats. And she couldn't see how cute they were. Anyway, some people are afraid of cats, like this blind girl I dated. But there, So there's lots of movies about scary cats, it turns out. Not so many in modern times. And we've decided that cats are adorable. And so making a film about a scary cat would be sort of a tough sell nowadays. But if you love cats, or I guess are scared of them either way, there's some interesting films with deadly cats, mostly for the, from the good old days. First off, let me say, I'm not going to cover movies, however good, which simply use the word cat in the title, like the old Karloff Lugosi film, The Black Cat, which is a terrific movie about Satanism, or the great silent movie, Cat in the Canary, or the Stephen King omnibus, Cat's Eye, yeah, there's a cat in it, but it's not actually scary, or Lucio Fulci's weird art movie, Cat in the Brain. None of these actually feature a cat in a position of power. I mean, yeah, there's a cat in part of Cat's Eye, like I said, but you know. Okay, I'm also not going to cover movies that have cats that aren't really cats. For example, the cat people and sleepwalkers have people who turn into panthers or killer cat monsters. That's not the same. I mean, I'm not afraid of cats, but everyone's afraid of panthers. I mean, duh. The Japanese movie Sakura Demon Slayer has a two-tailed demon cat. How cool is that? But it's the size of a bear. Plus, you know, it has two tails. Anyway, these don't count. You can make anything scary if you enlarge it, except maybe rabbits. <laughs> Maybe not everything. Anyway, for this, I'm going to use movies that are where the cat is actually the terrifying killer. Well, you know, air quotes, terrifying. So, Strays. The movie Strays is probably the most dead-on use of the idea of scary cats. It has stray cats who are terrorizing some people in an isolated house. But, as a friend of mine once said, I may not be in the peak of condition, but I think I can take on an alley cat. So the whole movie, you're kind of scratching your head. Yeah, a bunch of cats would be scarier than one. But we know cats don't hunt in packs, right? I mean, a pack of dogs? Yeah, that could take you down. Pack of cats? Eh, you know, would they really cooperate? You know? Okay, next, Shadow of the Cat. So, Shadow of the Cat is a really interesting British movie from 1961. So in this movie, this woman gets murdered and her cat sees what happened. It's a tabby. So the cat then brings about vengeance on her murderers and those who planned the murder. So the cat kills off like quite a few people. And as I recall, it survives the movie. So all is well. The Uncanny. Now, The Uncanny is a treat. I saw this at the um, at the drive-in. So The Uncanny is an anthology movie. It's got three episodes and great actors. Peter Cushing, Samantha Agar, uh, who you may better know from uh, the Brood movie. 
uh, uh, by Cronenberg, John Vernon, uh, Ray Milland, right, from X, Man of the X-Ray Eyes and other things, and Donald Pleasance. Everyone loves Donald Pleasance, right? So the idea behind the movie in Uncanny is that cats are actually supernatural beings who really rule the world. Now, cat owners, I know, joke about that all the time, but imagine if it was true. But in that case, people who find out about the position of cats need to be eliminated. Now, there's other supernatural parts in the film, like the humans shrink a guy down so they can get eaten by a cat and so forth. And anyway, also, uh, there's a modern movie called Uncanny. It's not, it's about AI, right? Artificial intelligence is not a remake of the old cat movie. It doesn't have Peter Cushing. It doesn't have John Vernon. Skip it. The Uninvited. So there's a terrific ghost movie from 1944 called The Uninvited. Sadly, this is not what I'm talking about. I'm referring to the weird killer cat monster movie from 1987. So I actually quite like terrible movies. If I get enough things in the comments, I might do a thing on, on bad, fun movies, which, you know, a lot of them are fun. Of course, I hate bad movies that are boring, you know, like Shakespeare in Love. Um, but bad movies that keep clipping along and surprising you can be a ton of fun. I guess the bottom line for me is I don't really rate movies as bad or good, but as entertaining and not entertaining. And I gotta say, The Uninvited is pretty entertaining, but for all the wrong reasons. Don't watch it alone. Not because it's scary, because you but because you want to make comments on it with your friends. It has a killer mutant cat. Look at how terrible the cat's head model is. And it kills you by this. Get this. A smaller cat comes out of its mouth. You never actually see how the little tiny mouth cat kills people. It's not clear if it actually completely exits the main cat and go after him, or if it just gets him like um like this. The tongue of the creature in Alien. Anyway, it gives us... Also, that scene in Alien gives us a bonus cat, so that's cool. Anyway, The Uninvited from the 1980s is idiotic. The monster is impossibly stupid. And you should be very entertained trying to figure out with your friends how the heck the cat is killing people. Check it out. I mean, look at this thing. Okay. <coughs> Two evil eyes. In 1990, Dario Argento and George Romero got together to make... Well, it's not an... <coughs> <clears throat> it's not an anthology, but it's like a portmanteau movie. It's in two halves. George Romero's half has Adrian Barbeau, so it's got that going for it. But Dario Gento's half is Poe's Tale of the Black Cat, which is a great story, by the way, if you haven't read it. It's a story, it's my one of my go-to stories for telling ghost stories to my nephews, nieces, and grandkids. Anyway, it's got a persecuted cat and who also persecutes. Now, Dario Gento is making an un... Um, ironically, and he ends up with a valiant attempt to make kittens scary. But you can imagine how successful that is. Anyway, I still rather like the movie, and I like most of Argento's work, as I've mentioned in other videos, so there you have it. Okay, The Corpse Grinders by Ted V. Mickles. It is a really sleazy, sordid movie by a guy that only did cheap exploitation movies. Now, exploitation movies don't have to be bad, but uh, Ted V. Mickles kind of were. Does that mean I hate his movies? Nope, after all. He did Children Shouldn't Play With Dead Things, which I love. Of course, he also did The Astro Zombies, which is like nightmarishly bad. Worse, he filmed like three sequels to Astro Zombies, for the, which there is zero excuse. He, oh, yeah. He also did a movie called The Worm Eaters. Do not see The Worm Eaters. You have a first hand from me. I saw it, so you do not have to. Anyway, back to the Corpse Grinders. So this movie was was a budget in the high tens of dollars, you know? And Mickle scraped the bottom of the barrel for his actors, too. This kind of works out because the actors are so seedy looking that they convince you they are the kind of people who might actually grind up corpses for cat food. And as we all know, once cats taste human flesh, they become deadly berserk killers. So if you like terrible, gory, unredeemable cheapo movies by all means see the corpse grinders i did so there is a movie from mexico called night of a thousand cats i don't know really what i can add to this film beyond the title i mean that says it all uh oh i have something it features hugo stiglitz who you add ask well if you have seen the amazing nightmare city which has a lot of other names 
He is the feckless hero. Also, though it doesn't actually have any cats, Nightmare City is a hoot. I have a signed petition, which I keep inside my D D DVD copy of the game, in which the people I showed Nightmare City passed it around and signed it, saying that Nightmare City was bad, and I was bad too for showing it. One guy at the end of the movie was standing up, pointing at the, th at the movie, not using these fingers, saying, screw you, movie, screw you. So, yeah, I should probably do a video about bad zombie movies. Uh, anyway, Hugo Stiglitz is the protagonist of Night of a Thousand Cats. And that's all I'll say about that, except it absolutely lives up to the title. There is a Night of a Thousand Cats. Okay, so the Black Cat. So Fulci made a movie called The Black Cat. It's not the same as the awesome Satanist movie from the 30s with Lugose and Karloff, but it has a, a killer cat. Now, this is not a supernaturally intelligent killer cat. It's just a killer cat. And it kills people the way a cat could do it. Like, for example, locking people inside a brick room so they suffocate to death, that kind of thing. Not, you know, attacking them physically. Anyway, there's a guy that owns the cat, and he's kind of working with the cat to kill people, and eventually he decides he's got to get rid of the cat because it or it knows or something, you know, it's not, right? So the cat starts, so the, there's a, I don't know what to say it. There's a cat and mouse game between the cat and the dude trying to see who will win. And so um, it's a lot of fun, actually. It's pretty whacked out like a lot of Lucio Fulci's movies, but I enjoyed it. So maybe you would. Now, I'm missing out on a lot of films here like Sleepwalkers, Houseu, Pet Cemetery, The Incredible Shrinking Man or The Doll People in which cats appear or do something important to the menace. I'm trying to stick to films where the cat is actually the monster. So... Yeah, I know this is a weird choice for a movie review session, but I recently got hold of a DVD. Actually, it was a DVD-R for Night of a Thousand Cats and thought, what the heck? And you know what? If I can't go out on a limb and talk about something bonkers on my own damn YouTube channel, who can, right? So, like me, hit the like button, subscribe if you if you want, get more stuff from me. I publish mostly every Friday. Um... If you can probably remember that, but if you want a reminder, you can sign up for notifications. I don't have a Patreon. I think it's inappropriate for a business owner, but I am a business owner. So check out my Peterson Games YouTube channel, subscribe to it. Also right now, check out this awesome product for sale on the petersongames.com website.